Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel and um, we're just going over this uh, airplane that's been fitted up now. I'm going to show you what I've done is I, I took out the plastic servos and put these nice metal geared servos in. I don't know if you can see that too well in there. The metal, well, I'll show you the ones that I'm using. They're not, um, well, not that expensive. But they seem to be, a lot of people are happy with them, so I'm sure I'll be okay with them. If they do start becoming a problem or anything, um, then I'll just swap them out with something a little bit better. It doesn't always mean, you know, that more expensive is better, but sometimes it can sort of come down to that, so. I've decided I'm going to use this in the airplane just for now just to get it going in the manual fashion this is my TBS um, diversity receiver and I'm just going to do a quick update for that because I can see already that um, there's a, an update quite as I've got the firmware 6.10 and there is a new firmware out there which is this one, 617, and there's the release note. I'm not gonna bother reading it because it's the same as for the other one. I could have done over the air using the radio, uh, but it's just easy enough for me to go from here. It just goes to show how simple the process is really for updating these things. Even if, um, you know, even if uh, you're using it over the air, it's exactly the same thing really, apart from when you plug in the radio and you plug in your, um, your receiver it will then start doing the update for you once it just asks you tells you there's an update and then asks you to do the update so we'll leave that going and while that's doing that i'll just drink my coffee shouldn't take too long at all As you can see there, that's done. Quick as you like. All right. So I can just shut that down. And that's all we needed that for, really. But um, I'll unplug this. So now this is ready to be used. So this has got an eight channel uh, receiver on it for the uh, PWM. You see we go from channel 1 all the way through to channel 8. Um, and I'm just going to chuck this into a Velcro and just put the antennas in, any old how. I'm not going to be flying very far away from me. Uh, this is on 868 megahertz, so I'm not going to get interfered with by the standard 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and the 5.8 gigahertz, sorry, and the 5G which isn't 5G as such, uh, 5 gigahertz, it's more like five, fifth generation. Um, and yes, yeah, so we're just gonna find a way, somewhere where we can just shove this in the airplane. If you really look down it like this, um, basically it's, it's, you know, I'm just gonna try and put it in here somehow. <laughs> Cause I just need to be able to connect these wires in. Now there's a double one here for my um, ailerons which means that they they can go from 1500 up to 2500 or down to um is it 500 yeah uh a thousand aside and so that's probably all i'm going to use for the alons because as one goes one way of course the other one goes the other way and of course this one's got the choke on it so that's for the um that's for the um power for the, um, the signal feed and it gives the power out five volts from the back on the ESC to allow me to power this and then we've just got the tail and rudder which are these two here I can't remember which one's which but it'll be easy enough we'll just put them on we'll, we'll give the thing a twiddle and we'll see what's what's doing there so let me just chuck that in there that, like that for now well, actually, I want that out because I've got to just try and see about the size of this battery. As I've been generally using 4S in my 
in the aircraft anyway, whether it be you know the Hunter or the Bixler. I'm going to stick with my 4S and I'm going to try and see if we can get this balanced in. It's a big old battery, um, but hopefully we should be able to find a centre of gravity with it. Not too, too much messing about. I may have to undo this from the sides and take it out just so I can put another strap a bit further down here, I think. Um, just because I'm not sure exactly where this is going to go in the nose and how far I'm going to have to pull it back, but I still want it to be pretty secure on there. Now this is the only one that I can find that it's got the rubber inside. So this is the one that I'll use for the main central battery. And I'll probably take this... No, I don't know. I'm just, I'll just leave that like that for now, that bit of uh, Velcro. I'm not going to put it on my batteries, particularly if I don't have to. I prefer to get some sort of sticky rubber on here or just something I can put on there which has a a rubber type texture when it's dried. I have to find something. Okay, uh, the wings again. You know, I, I, I did make a video doing it, but I used my other camera. And unfortunately, the other camera doesn't have the super wide. This one has the super wide, which enables me to be able to have this this close and have the whole thing in the frame, where the other one, uh, I spent most of the time with it out of the frame, just because I, I I wasn't keep checking it, this one I can pretty much do without doing that. So we've got the uh, control rods there, the horns are in, we've got this uh, same Metal Gear ESC. No wires are a little bit shorter, but it doesn't matter. It just means that the one is going to be pulled out a bit and then it will just be kept in there. Remember this isn't sort of finished because when I finish with this I want to put some black tape down here because that will show me the underside when I'm flying line of sight as opposed to the clear white on the top side. I've not even thought about FPV gear yet, but it's probably just going to be a backpack um, type thing sat on here to start off with. Not going to be doing long range to start off with. Just want to get a little bit of a play around with it. So that's the same on both wings. And uh, yeah, the, the on the back here, there is pull that round. There's two different sizes so this is a longer control rod there and that's a shorter one so uh, and I had to cut them both down in order for this to sort of fit um, because the actual rods were sticking on the end of the horn here and I couldn't move it properly and of course that's no good. Doing it like that I did the same on this cut off a chunk. Now I'd normally put a bit of heat shrink over the top of here and um, but just while I'm just prattling around with it, just to make sure it's all set up right and these servos are set up right uh, as mechanically as I can, I'll just leave it like that. This has moved a bit. I think that's supposed to be a bit more like that. And the actual elevator. But so that's, that's where we've got to. And I've put this around this because this one side kept popping out with its little a little nipply bit there kept popping out and so I've put this on to sort of train it to just stay in a bit tighter and down on this front one just uh, left it overnight and we'll just see what happens with that so this is the thing now where 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 do I put the receiver um, up here is where it feels like it should go just because of the way these cables are this length and that's just enough there to get out into the wing and that's just enough there to get out to the wing with a little bit of wiggle room because we don't want it to be too taut otherwise we're going to be pulling on the wires too much and they'll end up damaging that will cause us problems a uh, little longer one of this is going to be oh that is the throttle the longer one of these is going to be the uh, and it's only going to be an inch in it so that there is going to be for the, the rudder. So number four is for the rudder and number three is for the elevator. Uh, which is all good enough. Now what we're going to do now is like I say, put this, put a receiver, get the receiver in. Um, I'm a bit annoying this one just because it's got these, well it's not annoying, it's a great receiver, don't get me wrong. But I don't want to start drilling any holes or doing it would be nice if I could just fit that in 
in here and uh, I don't know where there is a whether there be a problem with these two antennas being two antennas being so close to each other. I'm wondering actually whether I can actually turn one of these off in the software. I'm not sure if I can or not. I'm not sure if I'd have to dummy load it at the end. But um, I've seen other people uh, who just you know let these things just get tied in together. But I'm not sure really whether that's a good idea having the two antennas because you've got to remember the telemetry comes back on this as well. Mm. Well, the tra telemetry is transmitted from this, and of course my radio transmitter is being received on here. So I don't know if mushing these two together is going to cause too many problems, but they are quite close anyway. Look, it's not as though they're designed to be particularly far apart from each other. So maybe that might not matter so much just for close up and just for getting this getting this thing going. So what I could do with doing now is just checking on here uh, what's what, because I always thought, I mean, we're gonna just set it up the way it suggests, which I'm gonna think then that channel five, we can just put, right, so this is channel two, so we can put it on channel two for the ailerons. We got our channel three there. Like I say, that's uh, forgotten already. That's for the um, elevator, and channel four is for the rudder. And I've got a funny feeling in the software. I've not even set that up yet. The software is going to be like that. So we should go to channel three like this. Nope. What's that? Channel four. Sorry. Channel four like this. Channel 3, signal to the top, where it says the Chan thing. Uh, and then we're going to want... This one I'm going I'm to just go with is Channel 1 then. And we're going to put our Channel 2 for the ailerons in here. Like, oops, like so. And then we should just be able to chuck that on there, plug a battery in, once we got the wings on I suppose, and uh, <laughs> see where we're going from that. Because I don't even know if these sticking out here, because they both just say five, is the right side. But we'll figure that out soon enough, I'm sure. Um, well, this is our channel five. So... Hold on a second. Channel 5. Channel 5 is a double one. And channel 2 is a double one. Ah, flaps. So we've got provision there for flaps. So let's say uh, channel 2 there. Channel 5 is going to be for flaps. Possibly that's provision for flaps. What else is going on inside here then? So we've got a channel 2, and we got a channel 2. I wonder if they've done that. I mean, if they've put a provision in for flaps or just something else on PWM, I'm not sure. But let's tuck channel 5 in from there. Let's tuck channel 5 in from there and leave channel 2 out on both. Yeah. Channel two out on both. And, uh, see if we can just pull that back out. Get a little bit of uh, wiggle room back in here. The way they've put them in is so they sort of lock into place by going through. I don't know if you can see that too well. Let me move into the light a bit. So they go into. This sort of area in here, where's my pokey pokey thing? This will do. So let's get that up close. So as you can see, I hope, they saw like they can go through this slot here and then they're trapped in the little gap, which is great for some uh, relief. So you don't just pull on the, um, so you just don't pull on the, the connectors. So you're actually just pulling on the, you know, the cable 
And I think the only reason I've opted for channel five on this, and it doesn't really matter, um, is because they were just easier to get to. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do then, is I'm just gonna put channel five in channel two's place, rather than play around with that just for the minute. Yes, yeah, so we can put channel two back out of the way again. Get the other channel two. Uh, they have the channel five, sorry, out. I'll just push that out that side. Just because these cables are already long enough. So it won't make any difference. The ESC in here is a 30 amp um, Bolotax or whatever this name is. I, cannot, I can't pronounce it for some reason. Right, so we'll just leave that as channel 5 and then we'll stick channel 5 because it's already here and I've got access to it in the channel 2 space. It's not going to know, it's not going to care, it's just the way it's been labelled up. And it just wants the connection to go there. Alright, so what we have to do as well is we have to uh, calibrate the ESC. It's simple enough. So, you know, so we'll just get them to stay there like that. Can't really, can't really use it like that. I think the other, some of the other parts are upstairs in the other box. This I never actually found out what this was for, but it's not on the destructions anywhere. If you, I mean, it could have been just something that was trying to keep shape or something, but but it certainly doesn't have it there or on any of these destructions. And in the box, the bits, as you can see there, it's not in any of that either, so, number 14, what's this? Motor shaft with cap only for Ranger 1600. Oh no, no that's it, that's, uh, yeah, we know what these are, these are the bits that go on the, on the end of the motors. Alright, yeah, so, so that's just the... Uh, a null. We don't need to worry about that. Right, so it's just that battery now. And if I get my radio set up, because it's not set up at the moment. If I get my radio set up. Uh, just chuck those in there. Now what you got to do with these when you do the um, connecting up the ESC and calibrating it is let me just get my TBS part. I've not actually set a model up either, so we're going to have to quickly set a model up. Um, so let's just find a space we can put this thing. I'll do 22, uh, create a model. Yeah, we're going to go for the airplane. Uh, for that one, is, does your model got an engine? Yes, it does. So that's going to go on channel one. Uh, enter. Oh, we got to go to the next page. Uh, right. So we're going to assign the channel here so we're going to say channel 2 for the ailerons and go to the next page how's it got flaps well it doesn't have any flaps at the moment but it's going to have some flaps but we'll just say no for that we're just going to go to the next page does it have air brakes no does it have uh, an elevon one channel and a rudder one channel so we're going to go yes well we can actually just um, shift across to there and then we've got our rudder on channel 4 and our elevator on channel 3 okay a long enter to confirm there we go model 22 i haven't bothered given it a name in actual fact i should do shouldn't i let's just do a model name and we're going to call it what is it it's a ranger 1600 oh wrong way skip up for this Bit quick, QR, give that a capital just by holding it down. You can give it a capital, somewhat on my head. Uh, 
Ichi A A P Q R A P Q P Q R and we can have a space and then we're just going to go 1600 in fact I think I can go backwards for that no we can't, we're going to go past all through the alphabet and then one all the way through the alphabet four, five, six and I probably should have just put this one down as um It's just been with the receiver, so if I can get another space there, I'm going to go RX, just as a receiver only. Oh, I'm going to do a capital R. All right, never mind, sir. Just for receiver. All right, just so I know I've got it. Now we need to um, go to the bottom of the page here. Um, we're going to be setting up for D16. We don't want that. So we're going to turn that off, we don't want that, so we'll switch that off. We're going to put the external um, module on, and we're going to go for Crossfire. Uh, and that is pretty much it. That should get us in the ballpark for getting going. Now, nothing is set up, none of the switches are set up, none of the uh, pots are set up anywhere, it's all just going to be these controls only. And then if I go here, and we can look at channel three. It's got it on there for the pitch. Um, channel two. Uh, I don't know why channel six is moving the way it is, but never mind. And then channel one for the throttle, and channel four for the rudder, for the yaw. All right, so that's ready to go. Probably do with some battery charging that. So I'm going to put this on first because we don't have anything else on. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to plug the battery in and we're going to just calibrate that ESC. So we're sort of halfway set up correct. We shouldn't blow up. Uh, we didn't get any noise out of it, which I don't really like that idea of no noise at the ESC because that would suggest to me that something is not doing what it's supposed to. Well, nothing smells burnt in there, so that's a good thing. Let's just double check. Oh, we got our wires on. And we are in the correct place. Yeah. Now look at that look. I think I think I can no, is it? No, that is in the right place. No, let's just take out everything else. Sometimes process of an elimination can be uh, your best bet. Or I should maybe even check that my um, so let's just bind it up and just make sure we are bound to the receiver. Because it's not gonna work if we're not. Um, let's have a little look. We've got no telemetry back, so I'm going to suggest that we're not actually bound to the receiver. And uh, I'm going to go in there for the page. I'm going to go down the bottom. Uh, there's no bind here, as you can see. So let's just look on the back and do it from the back here. We've got no connection. That should be green if there was a connection. So let's go in here into the uh, transmitter. We're going to click on the bind. I don't know if you can see all that. Oh, I'm sorry about the refresh rate. But that's a... Nah, that's a bugger, isn't it? I don't know what we're on, 30 frames, but it's not uh, not the same as that. So we're going to do the bind. Okay. All right, so that's happy. And we're going straight into the... Uh, oh, I think I can just pull that down. So let's just plug in the battery again. And we're just going to make sure that our uh, rudder and our elevator is doing the correct thing. Right. So what we want then... Alright, so what we want then is uh, our pitch. And that's, none of that's doing anything. Okay. So there's our rudder. 
that's nice that's where it's supposed to be yep and it's doing it if I wanted to go left yeah that's doing it if I wanted to go right that's doing that but we don't have any um, we don't have any elevator which is not very good so let's just see what's going on there it could be that the mapping's not correct it's not going to be that easy for me to show you the mapping just because you do it from the back here and of course this thing is not picking up how you want it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the RX here um, I'm just going to go into just general and just see what we've got going on here 12 uh, channel right yeah let's just put it on to 8 channel mode and we're going to just make sure that the fail safe is just to cut it uh, RC by Mavlink is off uh, RX battery sensor is off um, oh I wonder if we can just put that on Flam is off uh, Flam track is off and we can then go in and just look at the output map let's, well, let's look at that one first All right, so we've got channel three there, it says S-Bus. So we're gonna put that back to channel three. Okay, and maybe that might have fixed our issue. Let's have a quick look at the channel map. That's all on correct. Let's just go up that way. Yeah, that's all on correct. So maybe that's the issue that we had that on S-Bus for some reason. I don't know what I've been using doing it with the S-Bus but let's uh, just put this back on on this 90 degree and just give it a little a little a little wiggle a little test oh mm -hmm. well it's just good enough like that so let's, there we go because we're on the S-Bus now we've got our elevator all right so that's all good so we can screw that back in that's in the central position. That's mm, good enough for me. All right, so let's screw that back together again. And again, for these, you know, if they start seeming like they're uh, not going to be just locking in because you don't want to over tighten it. Get it a nip and that's it. A nip and that's it. But I think on this sort of fuselage, you're going to want to be testing these and just checking them. So again, just a nip, that's it, and that's it. And that'll be lovely. Now, I'm probably not gonna need the full throws on this, and I'll need to reduce the amount of throw. Um, just because, like, like I say, it's probably, it probably won't be needed that much. Now, with that like that then, let me just see if I can shove that out of the way. Somehow, I need to be able to get that battery to go in there and stay in there in one place. This is only when it comes to flying it, though. We're not flying it at the moment, so it doesn't really matter. Now, we're going to get the wings and just check that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Ooh! I feel the pain. Probably want this side, actually. Let's put that on there nice and flat just to try and um, avoid that from happening again. Now, the easiest way for me to do this rather than put the wing in is just to check. So we've got channel five, we plugged in channel five, didn't we? So that's the one we're gonna be testing. Now I don't know whether we need it on this side on this or not. Let's just make sure they're signal to signal. So the orange and the black to the black. So let's just put that in there and just there. Uh, so if we're on the right hand side, we flick it to the right hand side, we want to see this go up. Oh, it goes down. So now we know that's the, the wrong way round. Oh, get that out of there. And then we can just swap those over. Because that's a channel five there. Let's just pull this one through to this side. Gotcha. And then put this one through to this side. Gotcha. So now we know that they are ready to go on there. And it's nice to know that the provision in there then is for flaps. But we don't have any flaps cut out. But that doesn't mean say we can't cut them out and we can't cut out another hole uh, to put a um, servo. 
it just means the way it is at the moment we don't have any flaps right let's put this together oh i'm so excited i'm so excited <laughs> I am really excited. You've got no idea. It's uh, for me. This is uh, this great. So let's just put that in place a little bit there. Make sure that wire is going to be coming through where you want it to. Nice thing about the nice uh, plastic fuse fuselage is, uh, yeah, doing this you can put it down. It's a nice healthy click. That's what we want. Nice healthy click. And we know that's in place. See, of course, it's not going to work any other way around. It's, um, it just won't work. And you can't actually plug these in the wrong way around either. Because they've got little bits on them that don't let you do it. So that's the way it's going to be. That's how I'm going to set it up when it goes out into the field. It's literally going to just be clicking that together like that. Um, and we're going to be good to go. So let's get the other one on. radio down there for a minute should have probably turned it off but it doesn't really matter um, I would like now to have just something that would just stop the cardboard from just chomping into that at all just make sure that's going to come through the gap there I hope the music in the background doesn't give me a copyright strike not sure you're gonna be able to hear it anyway. I'll have to put a little bit of music in the background myself that hasn't got copyright on it. Oh, forgetting something. We're forgetting our metal bar, which we don't want to forget that. Let's just, you can see through there, one of them has got a darker, darker area there for putting the metal bar so it goes into the housing. That one doesn't have anything there. I wonder if you can put two in. I wonder if that's, um, for the bigger. I can't actually seem to get this one in. There we go. That's it. Ah, that, that makes it good and rigid. It's a good feel on that. So get our metal bar to there and into there. Put that on. Just make sure that cable's not in the way. And then we're going to get a nice firm. There you go, nice firm click. Let's put that upside down for a second. There we go. It's got the receiver and everything just hanging out. So now we can pop this on here. There we go, nice and firmly clicked in. So now that's not going to fall out. And that fits in quite nicely, quite snug, just fits into there. Right, let's flip it round. And there we go. There we go. If I had something, I could just sit that on. On the nose like that. There we go. Now we should be able to do our high five. So if I stand behind it. So the high five works like this. So if I move my stick to the right, if I move my stick to the right, we want to turn to the right. But I think I've managed to get that the wrong way round. <laughs> Did I manage to get it the wrong way round? My high five is supposed to, <laughs> I put it in the wrong way round. Um, because I want to turn to the right and me dropping that down is going to create more drag which will turn me to the left which will uh, no that should turn me to the right if in doubt check it out so right let's do a quick little quick little thing for our high five we're going to go into our menu and we're going to go through the pages here and we are going to, um, on our ailerons, we're going to come down here. Um, and I think we get away with it doing this. We're going to edit this. And we're going to get down here. And we're going to drop the weight uh, to 
minus 100. That's it. Yeah. And we're going to go the other way. I think this is the right way of doing it. Yeah, and now uh, by the rights. Now we got our high five the way it's supposed to be. Yep, nice and simple. Probably do with a little bit of. I can see that my rudder isn't quite centered the way it should be, so I'll adjust that mechanically here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. You can see it's just slightly off. Yeah, and it should be. There you go. See that's slightly off. So we'll adjust it mechanically here and just push it forward by extending the rod. And uh, well, that should be good to go. So let's just do that. I don't know if you can be able to see that from here. I'm going to do my best that you can. Pop that out, and uh, we want to extend it, so we're just gonna back this off down the rod a bit and then take a peek at it like this. Put it down there for you guys. You see, that's probably about, about on. I can always, no, that's about on, so I'm just gonna clip that together now. And like I say, normally I'd put a bit of heat shrink and just let it go over. Um, I don't need to heat it up and shrink it onto it, just need to put it over a little bit so it's it's done. Got a couple of little marks a little on there now. But might just warm that up a bit and see if we can uh, get that to come out. It'll probably come out anyway in a hot day. On a nice hot day, so that's it, it's set up. Uh, just got to do the propeller now and um, balance that up and see where we go from there. But I need to get some breakfast because my belly has been rumbling for a little while. So I need to eat something. So I'll get back to you very, very shortly. <laughs> 